Snake. You know who that is? You're kidding, right? It's Mario. Mario made his first appearance in 1981, and since then, he's become a worldwide phenomenon. There's probably not a single person who doesn't know Mario. He's that famous. <sighs> Good thing I survived long enough to meet him on the field of battle, huh? This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance, Snake. Now get out there and show him what you're made of. No regrets. Got it. That guy with the mustache. Ha! Ah, you mean the king of second bananas? Hey, that's Luigi. Show him a little respect. Look at that pale skin. He's been living in his brother's shadow for too long. That's a low blow, Colonel. Ah, face it, Snake. Once a kid brother, always a kid brother. Colonel, what's gotten into you? Lolly lu le lo. Lolly lu le lo. Lolly lu le lo. Colonel, snap out of it. Colonel! Colonel! Mei Ling, tell me what you know about Peach. Princess Peach is the beloved ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom. She's been kidnapped numerous times by Bowser. Sounds pretty serious. Yes, but every time it happens, Mario ends up saving her. Sure, he may not look like your ideal knight in shining armor. A little on the short side, I'd say. But still, don't you think it's romantic? I mean, to have a guy who's always there for you. If he was smart, he'd tell her to stop getting kidnapped. You don't get a lot of dates, do you, Snake? Careful, Snake. That's the great and terrible Bowser. Bowser? Looks like a cheap movie monster. Hardly. Bowser leads an entire army of monsters. But I'd worry more about his claws and fire if I were you. Doesn't look that tough to me. Seems kind of slow, actually. Well, he is the king of Koopas. It's only natural he'd be slow. But that's only because he's the heaviest fighter here, by far. He's a powerhouse of destruction. Careful he doesn't flatten you. Otacon, what's this lizard thing? That's a Yoshi. It's a dinosaur from Yoshi's Island. Watch out for its long, chameleon-like tongue. If it gets you, you'll be swallowed whole. It lays eggs and throws them, right? Then it must be female. Well, actually, it's a he. At least, that's what it says. It talks? Yes, it talks. Well, kind of. Now you've got me curious. How about I capture one so we can see what they taste like? Oh, Snake. Otacon, there's a gorilla wearing a tie here. He's huge. That's Donkey Kong. As you can tell, he's got strength to spare. He may be king of the jungle, but he lives in a house just like you or me. And he seems pretty smart. Well, for an ape, anyway. The Donkey Kong who fought that epic battle with Mario was this guy's grandfather. That was a long time ago. What about this Donkey Kong? Does he get along with Mario? Nope. They're still at it. Seems like they're always competing in something. Kart racing, sports, you name it. A chip of the old block. Snake, watch out! For what? That pink marshmallow? That's Kirby, also known as Kirby from Dreamland. He's from another planet. In other words, an extraterrestrial. He's got a powerful stomach that lets him swallow and digest anything. And he also has a copy ability that allows him to mimic opponents, steal their moves, and use those moves against them. 
On top of that, he has the power to fly around the stage. So once he's got you in his sights, there's no place to run. <laughs> yeah, got it. I'll keep an eye out. Otacon, who's the guy with the sword? That's Link. He's the hero of Hyrule. That blade in his hand is called the Master Sword, also known as the Blade of Evil's Bane. He also has a whole arsenal of items at his disposal. Bombs and arrows, a shield, a boomerang. He's a force to be reckoned with. Gear is only useful when it's used at the right time and place. Just lugging a ton of it around doesn't do you any good. I, uh... I wouldn't be talking if I were you, Snake. What's that supposed to mean? You tell me, Mr. Utility Belt. <sighs> Snake. I see you're fighting Zelda. Yeah, I guess. Doesn't feel right fighting someone in a dress, though. Don't underestimate her just because she's a woman. Zelda's attacks are backed by powerful magic. Her hand-to-hand -hand combat may look weak, but her magic makes it cut to the bone. So, this rose has thorns. Interesting. This is no time for pickup line, Snake. Don't worry. I know from experience that it's the quiet ones you have to watch out for. What's going on here? What happened to Zelda? Snake, Princess Zelda transformed into Sheik. I can understand the clothes, but to change her skin and eye color? That must take some powerful magic. Magic? Come on, Snake. Don't get all grumpy and start talking about how unscientific it is. Science is basically just another form of magic that makes our lives easier. I never thought I'd hear that coming from you, Mei Ling. Don't you think talking to someone halfway around the world is a kind of magic? Or flying across entire continents? No, I think this is completely different. <laughs> this guy is giving off a murderous vibe. Even getting close to him makes my skin crawl. Snake, Ganondorf is dangerous. His ambition is to rule the world, and he's got the power to do it. It's no wonder they call him King of Evil. Do modern weapons even work against him? Do I even have a chance? Take a look around you. There are plenty of people fighting with swords or even their bare hands. At least you've got firepower. Count yourself lucky. It's not like you to whine, Snake. I was just asking. Sheesh. Well, it's back to the mission for me. Hey, Otacon, I got a woman here in a power suit. Huh? How did you know she was a woman? Yeah. That'd be Samus Aran, the most renowned bounty hunter in the galaxy. Her arm cannon packs quite a wallop. If you get hit with a charged shot from that thing, you can kiss your butt goodbye. Hmm. Sounds like my kind of woman. Yeah, well, just don't get too close, Snake. Samus is deadly. After space pirates killed her parents, she was raised by the Chozo and trained in the fighting arts. She's been places and seen things that people like you and me can't even begin to imagine. Oh, but underneath that cold metal exterior beats the heart of a woman. Colonel, that fox is fast. You're fighting Fox, eh, Snake? His full name is Fox McCloud. He's the leader of the Commando for Hire unit, Star Fox. 
They're mostly active in a galaxy known as the Lilat system. Fox and his comrades pilot all-terrain fighter crafts called R-Wings. His skills in combat can turn the tide of any battle. You seem to have a thing with foxes, don't you, Snake? No, don't remind me. First foxhound, and now this guy. I'm sick of foxes. You and foxes have a long history together. You ought to be proud. This is Snake. Copy, Snake. This is Slippy. What? Who is this? What are you? Some kind of frog? Easy there, buddy. Just thought I'd hop on the wireless and give you a holler. Don't get mad. Hacked right into my channel, huh? But I'm not here to mess nothing up. Don't worry. <sighs> Just so you know, Falco uses a blaster and reflector that I designed. Just like Fox does. But Falco will kick his reflector and send it flying around. Just showing off, if you ask me. No reason a weapon can't have more than one use. In fact, I'd say its versatility shows how well you designed it. Hey, maybe so. I feel all fuzzy now. Thanks, Snake. Maybe next time we meet, you can design me a weapon. Oh, how cute! What? The yellow thing? That's Pikachu. It's a Pokémon. They're popular all over the world, you know? It may look cute, but be careful. It can store up large amounts of electricity in those adorable little cheeks. It'll try to pepper you with electric shocks. Couldn't be much worse than Ocelot's old torture device. Oh, and Snake? What? I was wondering, could you maybe try and catch Pikachu for me? Please? Uh, give me a break. What do I look like, a Pokemon trainer? Fine. Sorry I asked. Ah, uh, there's a big eyeball walking around here. That's just Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff? Is that some kind of marshmallow? Jigglypuff is a balloon-shaped Pokémon. It may be light and puffy and full of air, but its sleep ability is devastating. Sleep? What's so devastating about it going to sleep? The instant it falls asleep, there's a huge buildup of energy in its center of gravity. If it hits you, it's lights out for sure. So, it puts a lot of energy into sleeping. Sounds pretty irresponsible if you ask me. Takes all kinds, Snake. Especially here in Brawl. Hey, that's Captain Falcon, isn't it? Good eye, Snake. He's F-Zero pilot number seven. You know, seeing Captain Falcon here reminds me, we should do that thing we've always wanted to try. Oh, yeah, that thing. Good idea. Okay, ready? Go! Falcon punch! Falcon kick! That kid. Isn't that Ness? Ness? He may look like a mere boy, but don't let that fool you. He has PSI abilities that defy all scientific explanation. Hmm. Just like Psychomantis. Exactly. He can use teleportation, levitation, pyrokinesis, and psychokinesis. Yeah, but the question is, can he read minds? Not to my knowledge, no. Good. Then I won't have to worry about him predicting my every move. Even if he had telepathic powers, I don't think he'd use him to mess with you like that. I hear he's a good kid. So, those two are the ice climbers, huh? Snake, have you ever heard of a blood bond? Sure. It refers to a bond between two people that's so strong they die for each other. 
The ice climbers have conquered frozen glaciers and dangerous mountaintops together. I think they've formed a bond that we can't even fathom. I don't know. Seems to me they'd get in each other's way fighting to see who gets to the top first. Snake, in China they say, though brothers may quarrel at home, outside they defend each other from slight. Is that really a Chinese proverb? Even though they may get in each other's way occasionally, they'll pull together in times of need. They're an inseparable team, Snake. Don't underestimate them. Snake, have you heard the saying, politics makes strange bedfellows? Don't tell me that's a Chinese proverb. Um, no. It means that when the going gets tough, you might need unexpected partnerships in order to succeed. Marth was a prince whose kingdom was usurped. He didn't even have an army to fight with him. But as he battled his way forward, he found new allies to fight at his side. And in the end, he was able to reunite the war-torn land of Altia. So, he built his army from the ranks of his defeated enemies. Marth did his share of fighting too. Even when he had an army, he was always alongside his men in the thick of battle. Then he was betrayed by one of his most trusted friends. I can't even imagine how that feels. I can. Otacon, there's a guy walking around in here, and he's only got two dimensions. That's Mr. Game and Watch. He comes from a world where everything is flat. Game and Watch was a series of portable games released by Nintendo in 1980. They were powered by large-scale integrated circuits and only had monochrome LCD displays, so characters kind of looked like the numbers on a calculator. The guy you're looking at now, Mr. Game and Watch, was a character who appeared in these games. This is making my head hurt. Well, um... He's, uh, I mean, look, just start fighting him, and I'm sure everything will make sense. Otacon, there's a chimpanzee here wearing a Nintendo hat. That's Diddy Kong. He's Donkey Kong's partner. Not only is he lightweight, he can use a wide range of weapons as well. He can fly using those barrel jets on his back, and he can shoot nuts with his peanut pop gun. Peanuts? As in the ones in the little shells? Are you serious? Oh, wait, here's the best part. You see them lying on the ground after he shoots? If you pick up some of those peanuts, they'll restore your health a little. Huh. Edible ammunition, huh? Times sure have changed. Mei Ling, there's a mysterious masked man flying around here with a sword. That's Meta Knight. He's a knight from Dreamland. They say his sword swings can break the sound barrier. Whatever you do, don't get caught in one of his furious barrage attacks. He also commands the Halberd. A flying battleship. Mm, I've seen it. The bow looks like his mask. What kind of weirdo puts his face on the bow of a ship, anyway? Um, maybe he's a little narcissistic. Kind of like someone else I know. Really? And who would that be? Use your imagination. Look at the size of that hammer. That's King DDD you're fighting, Snake. DDD? You mean, it's not a penguin, Colonel? He's the king of Dreamland. Well, so he says anyway. Are you sure he's not a penguin? One full swing from that hammer can level an entire building. It may look like just a big wooden mallet but it's actually outfitted with special mechanical systems like turbojets and precision bearings to boost its effectiveness. I don't think I could even lift that thing, and he's swinging it around like it was nothing. But he also leaves himself wide open. 
Just make sure you avoid the swing snake. Mei Ling, who's this kid with the cat eyes? Oh, they call him Toon Link. Doesn't he look familiar? Yeah, he looks just like Link. But you know, there have been several people who've gone by that name, right? They all have certain things in common. Green clothes, a sword, a shield. But they all came from different lands and lived in different eras. And yet the spirit of the hero of the Triforce is timeless. It's an essence that transcends history. I think I can relate to that. Huh? What do you mean? There's been more than one snake, too, you know. Mei Ling, Samus took her clothes off. That's just her in the Zero Suit, Snake. Oh, without that bulky power suit, she's gotten a lot more agile. I bet if I took off all this heavy gear, I could catch her. Uh, yeah, you wish. Even without the power suit, all that training she did with the Chozo has made her a super athlete. I don't think a normal human could ever keep up. Just look at her. Hmm. Her loss. Colonel, there's a guy in here who looks like a wolf. You mean the fighter named Wolf? Wolf. That's a real imaginative name. He's the leader of a ragtag team called Star Wolf. They're the longtime rivals of Star Fox. Kind of strange for a wolf to have friends, isn't it? Well, I don't think he works well with others. I suppose they're more like hangers-on than actual comrades. But he's a remarkable pilot, and his ship, the Wolfen, is no slouch either. But this is hand-to-hand -hand combat, Colonel. He's out of his element. Careful, Snake. Those claws of his aren't just for show. Pokemon Trainer. That's the guy giving orders behind a Pokemon, right? Right. And this Pokemon trainer is controlling Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard. They represent water, grass, and fire, and they're all powerful. So, he makes his Pokemon fight while he sits back and watches. Sounds like a good deal if you ask me. It's not like that, Snake. Those Pokemon wouldn't know what to do if the Pokemon trainer wasn't there giving orders. In every battle, there's a soldier doing the fighting, and a commander telling him what to do. By working together as a team, they accomplish much more than either could on their own. So let's do this together, partner. Yeah, whatever you say, Colonel. You're fighting Lucario, aren't you, Snake? Mei Ling, what's that... Purple fire coming out of his hands. That's his aura. Aura? I guess you could call it his life force. Lucario can use his own aura and turn it into power. Every time Lucario's damage increases, his aura gains strength, making his attacks more powerful. So don't think you've got him beat just because his health is down. Ah, the cornered rat will bite the cat. Sounds like trouble. Hey! When did you become so good with proverbs? Uh, you must have rubbed off on me. <laughs> well, come back in one piece, and I'll teach you all the Chinese proverbs you can handle. I see you're fighting Lucas, Snake. Lucas? That boy has PSI powers, which he can use for different kinds of attacks. The poor little guy's had such a hard life. His mother was killed when he was young, and he was separated from his brother. After that, he faced all kinds of senseless hardships, and he slowly grew stronger. Senseless hardships? Yeah, I had a lot of those too. The question is, how you translate those hardships into a better future. Hmm. Well, I hope things turn out okay for him.
This swordsman's gonna be tough to beat. Fighting Ike, eh, Snake? Ike is the leader of the Grail mercenaries. He may look too refined to be a fighter, but he has one heck of a sword arm. Yeah, he's swinging that two-handed sword around with only one hand. I don't even want to get near him. That's the Holy Blade of Ragnell. It's an extremely powerful sword. But don't forget, Snake. You're armed to the teeth yourself. To your opponents, you might just be their worst nightmare. The distance between you and your enemy is a crucial element in battle. Using that distance can give you an advantage against some enemies. Yeah, I've got the same feeling. Otacon, there's a kid with wings out here. Is he a mutant, or is he just into costumes? That's Pit, Snake. Pit is an angel from Angel Land. He's the captain of Palutena's army. Angels? Give me a break. I don't know. Maybe he's from a different species. But those wings on his back and those mysterious weapons he has are the real deal. He may look young, but he's a veteran warrior. Watch yourself. He used to be a weakling, but countless trials over the years have toughened him up. And by trials, you mean game overs? Uh, yeah. You should know all about that. This guy kind of gives me the creeps. That's Wario, Snake. Wario first appeared as Mario's rival, but he really made his name in the WarioWare games. Watch out for Wario's bite. It's not just damage you take from it. What do you mean, Colonel? Wario loves garlic. He eats whole cloves of it day and night. So try not to get caught in his mouth. Once that smell gets on you, it'll stick to you for quite a while. Oh, that's a scary thought. He also attacks by farting. He can fart to fly around, too. By farting? Are you kidding me? Sadly, no. I am not kidding. If his belly starts to bulge, watch out. Snake, have you ever heard of the ancient Chinese story, The Vain Ocean of Wealth and Splendor, from the Zhen Zhongji? I've been waiting for the movie. Basically, it's meant to express the impermanence of all things. You know, like even when Captain Olimar has lots of Pikmin with him, they could all be gone the next moment. Those poor little guys, they carry, they fight, they multiply, and they get eaten. Olimar might have lots of company one minute and be all alone the next. It's so sad. But he can pluck out more Pikmin anytime he wants, right? Well, yeah, I suppose so. No one truly fights alone, not even me. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Snake. Good luck. I'm rooting for you. So, Snake, you're fighting Robot? Yeah, it's a robot. Although, couldn't they have come up with a better name? Actually, in the U.S., they called him Rob. Robot, Rob, take your pick. Fine. Rob it is, then. In North America, Rob's body was gray, like the NES. But in Japan, he had a white body and red arms, the color of the Japanese Famicom. <sighs> you sure know your geeky tech stuff, Otacon. <laughs> well, you know. Hmm. Snake, what is it? Something about that hedgehog rubs me the wrong way. Oh, you mean Sonic the Hedgehog? But everyone loves Sonic. He's a big star. Do you have any idea how excited people are that he's here in Brawl? Yeah, I know. There's something about him I just don't like. But why? You must have some kind of reason. Nope. Just don't like him. Colonel, 
it's me. I'm fighting myself. Snake, what's going on out there? Could it be? Has the Les Enfants Terribles project really come this far? It's more than that. He's got my moves, my gear. It's like looking in a mirror. Do you think they collected data on you and created another snake? He's got the same build, too. Creepy. But his sneaking suit is a different color, and his tactics are slightly different. Interesting. So even if you're evenly matched in power, your fighting styles will make a big difference. You faced tougher odds in the past, Snake. Don't let this imposter beat you. <laughs>